Congratulations, well earned. Okay, good week, tough game. A lot of guys went out. And what happens when they go out? Next person, up. Oh, oh. All right, every person valuable, critical on this team. Everybody. Hey man, I told y'all from the beginning, this built our family, bro. Yeah. We played for each other and we showed it today. It was a good dub. Let's go take care of our bodies. Enjoy this one tonight. Yes, Giants sir. on three, Giants on three. One, two, three. Giants. Giants. Welcome to another edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. I'm Bob Popov. The Giants travel to London for the third time in franchise history when they take on the Packers in the New York area. You'll see the game at 9.30 a.m. It's a morning game when those are played in London. we got a big show lined up for you. Carl Banks will go to the coaches' tape with strategy. We'll hear from Madeline Burke, Paul Dottino, Sean O'Hara, and Amani Toomer here on the program. But I'd like to welcome in my co-host, two-time Super Bowl champion, Carl Banks and the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. And uh, Banksy, 3-1 and one heading to London. Man's got a smile on his face. Well, that's what winning does for you around here. And um, Coach, they, they played a very tough game, you know, and it was resourceful. Everybody, you know, just stepped up and continued with that will to win. Yeah, I think everybody contributed and had a hand in it. I thought that you know, Wink and Kafka and T-Mac called a really good game. The guys were focused, and it was a physical game. Uh, we knew it would be physical going in relative to how they've played and then how we wanted to play, and uh, give credit to the players. They, they did a good job. You mentioned to the media after the game you wanted to get 40 rushes in there, and you certainly did that as a team. Um, what about the run game as it's getting better and better each week you like about it? Yeah, I think the guys understand what we're trying to do, and, again, it's not always going to be – Five, eight, 10, 12, 30 yard gains. Uh, you know, we have a good running back, as everybody knows, and I think our, our line is learning how to play together. Um, I think Bobby Johnson and Kafka do a good job each week of trying to design runs that we think will be good against the opponent, and it was really just good overall execution on the player's part. Coach, you, you often speak, and many coaches do, of having a short memory, good or bad, right? But this offensive line the week before did not have their, their best. They went against a really good team. But the resilience and how they bounced back and was really able to create some really great results. Yeah, I thought Andrew Thomas did a great job of leading that room. And you know, those guys are resilient people uh, that are playing for us up front. And you need to be. It's a, it's a tough league. And, and obviously, an offensive lineman likes to run the ball. And, and they knew the game plan going in. And, Again, you can do that if you're you're successful. Um, it's hard to go zero zero and then it's third and ten, you know, three series in a row. So the production aspect was there, and um, I just thought they really gelled and, and showed good resiliency from the prior week to this week. A lot of guys during the game got nicked, um, and I think one of the hallmarks of a young Coach Dable team so far has been versatility and cross training. Because Bredesen starts at left guard. Glowinski goes out in the first half. You got to move him over there. Then Evan Neal gets knocked out. Devery Hamilton. Is that um, a coach's dream to see guys respond? And then you had to do it on the defensive side of the ball too. Yeah, we just you know we have the next man up mentality. Uh, every player on this team is here for a reason. Uh, we expect them to know what to do. I'd say again we place a high premium on intelligence uh, and being ready to go. So the, the intelligent factor plus the dependability factor. Even when they're not getting full reps during the week, they're on the show team, they're doing what they're supposed to do, they're studying after with the players. Um, you know, it's really important to us. Well, you talk about next man up, Coach, and the, the ability to transition when you watch two quarterbacks leave the game and you seamlessly go into a different package. And I know that you say you drew a few of them up on the sideline and you talk about how smart guys are, but the installation process and to Bob's point of the way you cross-train your players that started back in OTAs. Yeah, no question, Carl. You, that's what you do in OTAs and training camp, and you always have a lot of questions. Well, he's playing guard here, but then he played tackle tomorrow. This receiver played inside, and he played outside. Um, that's what you need. You can only bring so many to the game, and, and everybody has to be ready to go if something happens. Um, and, and again, that's why we place such a high premium on intelligent players, people that we can cross-train, uh, that they can go out and execute under pressure uh, without getting a lot of reps during the week because things are always going to happen in a game. So when it happened and you're on your third quarterback, you and Coach Kafka in your headsets, 
Was it an oh crap moment or let's just go to this? Yeah, no, it was really composed. Um, you know, we, we came off on the sideline. We talked about a few things. I say all the offensive coaches were part of it. Uh, we had plays that we were working for that week, not for that instance, but it was a good time to use them. And, you know, we talked about a few other things that we thought would give us a chance if this happened. And, uh, you know, coaches did a really good job and the players did a good job of executing. You held your opponent to 12 points in the football game. And very importantly, uh, in their three red zone trips, they only got field goals. They didn't get touchdowns. So you kind of kept the game in the profile that you wanted. But can you talk a little bit about Dexter Lawrence? I know you don't want to single out one guy, but yeah, he certainly showed a lot of leadership with the way he played. Yeah, he did. Um, really played a good game, affected the, the paint, as we call it, the, the pocket there uh, quite a bit of times. Uh, he's a mismatch if you block him one-on-one. -on -one. But I'd say you know, he played a lot of snaps. He almost played the entire game. And for a big man that, that's, that weighs that much to, to go down in and down out and the hustle that he showed, uh, just happy he's on our side. And I, I'd really say, you know, our captains, uh, Dexter, Saquon, Andrew Thomas, Xavier, I mean, I could list all the guys that, that are on that in the captaincy spot, um, really did a good job and, and played well this game. And, and that's what you're hoping for as a coach is your, your leaders and your best guys play the best. I know you're a one game at the time kind of guy, but uh, you are three and one through your first four. Do you feel like your team has started to develop a personality that you would have hoped to have seen? Yeah, I'd say we just try to play as hard as we can for 60 minutes, uh, be a resilient group, know that there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, whether that's play to play, series to series or game to game. Um, to focus on the things that we can control during the week and control how we play and coach. That's all that I ask of those guys. And if you do that during the week and you do everything you can do, you study, you prepare, you practice hard, uh, we, we can live with the results. We might not like them, uh, but we know we're trying to do things the right way. All right, we're just getting started here on the program. When we come back, Carl and Coach go to the auditorium for building blocks here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show. Coach, there were a few impactful plays in this game. The team played hard, but there were some plays that really stood out. Let's go through a few. Sure. Uh, this first one is uh, we're on the offensive side of the ball. It's a second and one situation where, you know, you really can, you're kind of at control here when you're an offensive play caller. You can play action, take a shot. You can play action, take an intermediate pass. Just run a direct run or run your best run available, um, knowing that you're, you know, you have a pretty good chance of picking that up, whether you go on fourth down or third and one here. So uh, here we're in two tight end set. We got two tight ends over here to the offensive left. Receivers opposite of one another. And you can see they're, you know, crowded at the line of scrimmage. And Daniel's doing a good job of, of recognizing the defense. Uh, and he chooses to go to the weak side of the formation with the running play. We do a good job of, of pinning this nose here with our right guard, Glow. And John comes around to, to get that play side backer really good cut by 26 as he's reading the end man on the line of scrimmage and and 55 kind of jumps inside of evan evan's going to the to the play side peck of this player so as soon as saquon feels this he puts his foot in the ground the three steps again and, and gets it going vertical and i think it's a really good shot here at kg outside on the perimeter of finishing off his block on the corner to allow saquon to gain another eight to ten yards now, Coach, as we go to the end zone of this play, sure. your right guard does something that allows Saquon Barkley to get from zero to 100 before he hits the line of scrimmage. I mean, it opens up. He gets his guy pushed back to linebacker level, and as a runner, he makes, he makes one cut, and he's at full speed here. That's exactly right. So this is what we're looking for with Saquon. No wasted motion. They'll do a good job of reading this defensive end. And as we go out there to reach him with, with Evan, he jumps inside. Saquon feels a hole right there. And I think between Glow and Feliciano, they do a really good job of creating space for him. And the backside is just as important as you see Bredesen go up to take this play side backer and AT cut this defensive lineman off. Really a well-blocked, well-executed play offensively. And then again, 
these receivers blocking out here. I know we didn't throw a lot of passes this game, but I thought our receivers did a really good job on the perimeter of making some blocks that allowed our runners, particularly Saquon, to gain, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten extra yards. All right, let's take a look at a defensive play here. Sure. So here we got him in a, a situation second and 12. You know, as an offensive play caller, these are a lot tougher than the second and ones. So uh, I thought Wink did a really good job of, of calling this defense here. You know, they're in a pass set. They're going to have four open receivers. It's, you know, either going to be a five or six man protection as you have it with the back. And I'd say we're in a four down front. The line is sliding away from the back. So the center, the guard, and the tackle are sliding to the right. These two guys are going to have the tackle in the end on their side. And what we're doing is running a cross blitz here on the back. So as Jalen comes in here first, you know, that's the first guy the back has to take. Don't ever pass one to hit one. And Tay does a great job of staying really tight off of Jalen's course. And he's free to the quarterback for a big play that gets us to third and long. So if we take a look at the end zone copy here, the quarterback, you can see he, he senses blitz. He knows there's a hot, but you got someone sitting right in the window there. And by the time he comes off of that to a second read, he's reading Tay Crowder. That's exactly right. And, and Tay does a good job of not wasting any space or, or getting around this guy. He's coming straight down the pipe. I think Jalen does a good job on, on, on Herbert there of, of trying to swim him and get him to come with him Good team football, you know, selfless football. They go to block 54, and here comes 48. And you can see Big Dex doing a great job of his contain because he's lined up here in a tight shade, and now he's coming all the way around on this pressure. Tibbs is doing a good job of coming up the field to force this if he needs to come this way. Just good team defense. All right, now, this last play that we're going to look at is special teams yep. and special teams had a real impact on a very close game at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I was proud of those guys. Uh, certain plays, obviously, we'd like to have back, but when it counted the most, you know, Jamie did a great job with his punt, the direction of it, the hang time of it. They're setting up a return. They have two guys on one, two guys on one, not rushing us backed up trying to get in good field position to go down there and, you know, score a touchdown and then go for the two point. But you know, good effort here by the gunner. And as he drops it, you know, it's just a physical play right here to, to throw the vice player back into the returner. And then great hustle by Brightwell, by Cam. You know, we got population by Ox. We got population to the ball. And what a great recovery by Gary, not trying to pick it up or scoop it, just being aware of the situation, gets into fetal position, goes ahead and, and picks up the ball. Really a huge play. And, and the thing you really appreciate about this is, is the hustle from the punt team, but then also the excitement and the team camaraderie on the sideline. And that, that creates and continues the momentum. In a tight game, getting a play like that, you see everybody is involved from the players on the field to the sideline. But another minor detail, Coach, Gary Brightwell had the sense of awareness not to get the ball and roll out of bounds. He was able to, like you said, get in that fetal position, but he made sure that he stayed no doubt about in it. bounds with the ball. He secured it in bounds, and that ball was right to the sideline. Yep, and it all starts with, with effort. And these guys are busting their tails down the field. You know, he would very well easily started slowing up Great job of forcing that the gunner spot by Lane, and then just really smart recovery by GB. Just a really a big time play for us. Coach, thank you. We're Welcome. smarter. We'll be back with more of the Coach Dable Show. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. The Giants take on the Packers in London on Sunday. Now it's time for Head to Head. Here's Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara. So it's time to go head to head as the Giants take on the Packers over in England. 
Sean, I think first up, we got to look at this very important matchup between Kayvon Thibodeau and David Bakhtiari. Now, Bakhtiari, left tackle, five-time All-Pro. You know all about those good offensive linemen. Coming off an ACL that forced him to miss a year plus, played in two games, kind of got his legs back. And Kayvon knows that's going to be a challenge. I mean, you know, you got to give credit where credit is due, so I am definitely excited to go against him, but I'm looking at him like as a nameless, faceless character, and I got to, you know, obviously break down his film and see what he does, but yeah, I'm licking my chops. I'm ready, to, I'm ready for the opportunity. As you've gone through two games so far since you came back from the injury, I know you've scraped off a lot of the rust. How much more do you want to see from yourself in the third game? I mean, my expectations are always high, whether it's, you know, the third game or the 17th game, I'm still going to try to play the best, so I mean, you know, we're looking for a win first, so as long as we get that win, I'll be content, but I definitely want to play well, you know, in London. Kayvon Thibodeau searching for his first sack of the season, and you mentioned it, Paul. You always remember your first. This would be a great one for him to get against David Bakhtiari, one of the premier left tackles in the NFL when healthy. And one of the things that he's going to have to really deal with is David Bakhtiari is so good with his hands. He always finds a way to get them inside. So any rookie, edge rusher, or defensive lineman, they're always trying to figure out that hand game, that hand-to-hand -hand combat that comes into play. That will be a big part of this matchup. And for Thibodeau, I think he's doing a really good job now of anticipating the snap count. You can see that get off that he had back in college, that first step. You're starting to see that show up now that he's healthy and, and hoping to be fully recovered from that knee, knee injury earlier early this season. I think for Bakhtiari, the one thing that's interesting about this Packers offense, Paul, is that they're running the football a lot more now. So it's not the same pass-heavy offense that Bakhtiari was used to uh, earlier on with Rodgers. Now they're much more of a running offense, which should help him out and will force Kayvon Thibodeau to play more run on first and second down. Well, coming off of a knee injury like Bakhtiari is, do you think it's easier to run block or pass block as an offensive lineman? Definitely run blocking because you're the aggressor and you're you're the one that's that's attacking. Whereas pass blocking, you're, you're a little bit more passive and you have to kind of redirect based on the rush and the change of direction is always the toughest thing when coming back from a knee injury. One of the things that David Bakhtiari has always done a great job of is, is anchoring. So when Kayvon decides, hey, I want to turn my speed rush into a power rush and try to pull him back, that's where David Bakhtiari and those inside hands and, and that anchor plays a big integral role in his ability to slow down that rush. So no doubt that's something Thibodeau is going to want to test. And of course, when you're playing out there on the pitch in London, you never know how the cleats work out. So you're going to test that bull rush out early and find out, can this tackle anchor on the pitch? Yeah, that uh, pitch was a bit soft when you played out there in 07. A little damp. Let's go to our other head-to-head -head matchup, Ben Bredesen against Kenny Clark. Now, Kenny Clark, a two-time Pro Bowl pick. He is a force on the inside. Bredesen, however, is coming off one of his best games as a giant. He's looking for a little bit more this week. He's an incredible player. Um, you know, he, he plays the run really well, plays the pass. Uh, he's got a great pass rush. And, uh, you know, he's definitely a difference maker in their form. How difficult is it because they tend to move him over the right shoulder and over the left shoulder of the center? You never know exactly where he's going to be. And how important does that make your communication? Because now you have to make sure you're making the checks. Yeah, absolutely. You know, communication is always huge on the offensive line. And, uh, you know, especially when you have a good player uh, on the inside, you always want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, you know, all the calls are loud and consistent. And everybody knows what's going on. So it's going to be a big week for communication for us. He's not the biggest interior lineman in the league, but it looks like he might be among the most powerful is that surprising as to when you get him on the field and you find out how strong he really is? I think it's, you know his quickness builds into that. You know he's a, he's a explosive player and he's and he's powerful. So um, you know, like I said before, he's a good player in both in both facets of the game, and uh, it's going to be a good challenge for us this week. Bredesen is a young player, but he sounds like a true vet when you hear him talk about the trench play. And he knows he's got a big challenge up against Kenny Clark. You mentioned he's a big guy. He's what you call like a forklift defensive tackle. He's got so much power. He's so low to the ground. And he just pries guards open. So the hand battle is going to be huge for this. And for Bredesen, I think one of the things that, that he's done a really good job of is in the run game, doing a good job of moving his feet and not falling off of blocks. And that's going to be paramount with Kenny Clark. Kenny Clark's playing between 75 and 85% of the snaps, so he's not just a first and second down defensive tackle. He's out there on third down as well. He had a monster game a couple weeks ago, Paul. He had two sacks, two quarterback hits, two tackles for a loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So no doubt he's got a lot of potential. He plays with a lot of power. And for a guy that big, he's quick as well. So I know for Bredesen, he's got to do a really good job with his hands. He can't let Kenny get on his edge 
because he's got a great he's got a great one arm. We call it prying him open. He pries the guard open, mm -hmm. kind of opens it up like a beer can. Yeah, you mentioned the Tampa Bay game, that two sack games. Fifth time in his career he's had multi sacks. And for an interior lineman, that's a big deal. But the other thing you got to watch out for, I think, Sean, is that Clark will line up over either shoulder of the center. So making those adjustments at the line could be very critical for the interior. Yeah, and when he lines up on the center, he's in that A-gap. He's trying to penetrate, so you've got to do a great job of shutting him off, whether you're front side, whether you're back side. Bredesen showed his versatility when he filled in at right guard when Lewinsky went out last week, so he's got to be ready to, to be in a left-handed stance and a right-handed stance. Uh, certainly that's going to, going to be a big factor whenever he switches sides because when you switch your stance, Paul, going from left guard to right guard, now all of a sudden your brace leg, your anchor leg switches. So that changes, and sometimes guys struggle with that. Um, this guy's got a heck of a bull rush, so you got to figure that out fast. Okay, Sean, that'll do it for head-to-head -head this week between the Giants and the Green Bay Packers. Now let's go back to Bob. Carl, the Giants want to keep that run game going. New England had success last week against the Packers, running the football, trying to stay on schedule. Um, just talk about this matchup and how difficult it is. Well, it's all about this giant front line doing their job. They have been very aggressive in the run game. They've been very physical. They have to establish the line of scrimmage. Obviously, with the way Saquon Barkley is running, everybody's going to make a concerted effort. But they have to still be intentional no matter how many people they put in the box. We're just getting started here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. When we come back, over, under, and much more here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. The Giants playing in London for the third time. Big Blue 2-0 in London, having won in the 2007 season and the 2016 season. Now it's time for this week's edition of Over Under. Here's Madeline Burke with Imani Toomer and Sean O'Hara. All right, time now for our favorite game of the week, other than the football, of course. I'm talking about Over Under. We got a few props here. We're going to see what you guys think. Sean, I'll start with you here. Over Under 30 carries for Saquon Barkley. I'm going to take the over on this one all day long, and not just because Saquon has been so impactful and had so much success already this year. We don't know what the quarterback situation is, so yeah. Saquon might have to play quarterback again. <laughs> I think when you look at the Giants' offense, it makes sense to let him handle the football as much as possible, and uh, this offensive line has really come together, so I'll take the over. I'm with you. I'm going with the over. 4.7 yards a carry. He had 31 carries last week. If it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm going to go with the over. Absolutely. I'm going to go with the over as well. We're going over across the board. I mean, this offense clearly runs through Saquon Barkley. Why change it at this point? All right, Imani, over under two Giants forced turnovers. I'm going to go under. I think the Packers have uh, had problems last week. I think they're going to shore up their issues. I don't see the Packers being a, a team that's going to turn the ball over. Yeah, I'm with you, too. I'm going to go under here as well. I, I think, look, if things get a little sloppy over there on the pitch, you know, the, the ball security could like be that. an issue. <laughs> Extra um, sloppy. But I look at Aaron Rodgers, and, I, and he takes care of the football. Yeah. He hasn't thrown more than five picks in six seasons. Um, he's already thrown a couple this year. But won this last week, I think yeah. this is a little bit of a different offense. Uh, I think special teams could get another turnover like they did last week, but I'll take the under. I'm going to be the, the difference one here. I'm going to go with the over because, like you said, he hasn't thrown more than five picks in a season. He's thrown three already this season, not to mention the Packers have lost a fumble each week this season and have put the ball on the ground a couple more times. I think the Giants are due for an interception and maybe a few other takeaways, so I'm going to take the over here. I like it. All right. Sean, over under 120. 25 rushing yards allowed by this Giants defense. This Giants defense did a great job against the Bears last week, but I'm going to say, I'm going to take the over on this one because we're talking about the Green Bay Packers offense and Aaron Rodgers, and it's different. It's not the same high-powered throwing offense that we've seen in the past. They're really leaning on Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, the runners, so I'm going to say that they give up more than 125 yards rushing, but I think that's a good thing. I think because this team is so balanced and it's not just what they were in the past is heavy throwing, the fact that they do have that two-headed monster, there's just more balance. And I feel like the Green Bay Packers want to run the football more with this new team. I think they're going to go over. I am going to agree. I'm going to take the over as well. Packers are averaging 145 yards on the ground. And as you mentioned, Sean, Aaron Rodgers is doing more of that dink and dunk offense. They're running the ball a lot more. I think they're going to continue to do that this week and hit the over. All right. Amani, over under two London-themed touchdown celebrations this week. 
Uh, I'm going to go under. I just don't. I think people are, I think both teams are really focused on trying to get this W. Uh, I just don't, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. I'm going to be the old man. Back in my day, we didn't used to do <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. So I, I'm going to go under. All right. I'm, I'm going to take the over on this one. I do agree with what you're saying. I think, I think these teams are so young. I don't know if these kids know enough about London to have the celebration, but I'll take the over. I think Aaron Rodgers busts one out. I think he, maybe he goes pinky, like he's having some tea. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We've already seen the Packers tea celebration. I think I'm going to take the under just because I'm not sure there are that many London themed touchdown celebrations. What are they going to do? Hit a curtsy? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> a curtsy would be interesting. I, yeah. I don't know what they'd hold out. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can meme it, you know, mime it. Whatever. Knighting. 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 There we go. We're going to brainstorm that. some London themed touchdown celebrations while we send it back to Bob and Carl in the field house. Carl, Saquon Barkley's coming off a career high and carries with 31. The Giants are going to have to worry about the Packers' run game as well because they throw two backs at you that are pretty physical football players. They are. They're a physical run team. And, and Bob, it's not, they're not a passing team. They are a balanced football team. They'll, they have one of the best, most accurate passers in the league, but it's all set up off the run and off of play action. Yeah, and they got some young wide receivers. Alan Lazard is a guy that can really stretch the field. So... It'll be interesting to see how the Giants deal with that. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll go to the coach's tape with strategy with Carl Banks here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Sunday, it's the Giants and Packers in London. Time for strategy with Carl Banks. Carl, strategy when you're dealing with the Packers you got to stop Aaron Rodgers or try to slow him down. And the guy hasn't missed a beat even as he approaches, you know, 38 years old. Well, when you talk about a standard for excellence, number 12 is the guy. And what makes him so great here, Bob, and we'll just take a look. Pressure. He senses pressure. He gets through. Now, look. He's looking here. Now, just watch where the ball goes. Goes outside. So he has great arm angles. He has great feel for the game and what defensive angles he can take advantage of. Yeah, you know, one of the things, um, he's so mobile within the, within the pocket, but his eyes are always downfield. And then he has God-given arm strength where he can zip a ball on the run, in the air, like that to Randall Cobb. Pinpoint accuracy, we might add, too. He's just not throwing them up there. So he is as good as they come in this league in terms of, he's like a point guard literally, because he can distribute the ball where it needs to be and on time. Now, let's just take a look here. I wanted to highlight this play, Bob, because this is a route concept that the Giants have seen all year. And the purpose of this is to put this safety in conflict. And now this is a shallow crosser with a deeper crosser coming behind it. So if I freeze it, here's your shallow crosser here. So your safety is now trying to bracket and hold this off. But as this play progresses, now this crosser here, now because of his hesitation, here's the backside crosser, and there's no one in the middle of the field. Now this is a concept that this giant defense has seen all year, and they've had mixed success with it. So it's something that they really got to make sure that they're conscious of and what that type of coverage will do and what they're exposed to and you know for a fact at some point during the game Rodgers is going to take some shots on stuff like that yeah once you once he sees a safety on one side and not directly in the middle of the field and the whole back side a real estate is open he's going to purchase that property now the Packers also like to run the ball uh, Aaron Jones is averaging 6.8 yards per carry on 48 carries this year and Dylan is also a good running back. We're going to take a look at Jones here in action. Yeah, Aaron Jones. Now, it's important for this Giants as they prepare for this, this, this team, pay attention to alignments. Here you see Jones aligned directly behind the tackle. He's lined up over there not to run outside, but to run across. So you get a motion across the formation, and now it's like a sweep going the other way. Now, Gap control, gap responsibility is key. So you've got a tackle here who really makes the play so that the linebacker can't run through and make the tackle. Watch the tackle. He shields. He's going to block this guy. He ends up blocking two guys, which allows the back to run across. 
Yeah, it's really good vision there by Jones and well executed up front by the Packers. Right. Now, again, I talk about how the defense has to pay attention to little details. So on this next play, you'll see Jones in a similar alignment. But his alignment now is almost splitting the guard and tackle here. Now, remember, on the outside run, he was more behind the tackle. So he's here. Does that mean he's going to run the same play again? No, he's in tighter for another purpose. And another key to this is last time the motion came this way and they ran it this way, right? So if you want to marry the two, the alignment plus the motion coming back across, it gives you a sense of how they like to run the football when he's in tight. There he is, outside run to the motion side, but his alignment was tighter. And it goes for a touchdown against the Chicago Bears, a game in which the Packers won. Now, you go to the other side of the ball with the Green Bay Packers. They can get after the quarterback. They have 11 sacks this season, and the Packers are only giving up 17.3 points per game through their first four games. And the reason they can do that, Bob, is because across their line of scrimmage, here, 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 and here, they don't have to bring a lot of blitzers. They just outwork you. They're in a little bit of an overload here with three to one side and one on the back side. But just take a look. This is no stunts, just all straight pass rushing. And they're able to get to the quarterback, collapse the pocket, and get the sack. No games, just straight rushes, and they get two guys to the quarterback. Yeah, and that's Rashawn Gary who gets the sack, who's a Jersey native from Scotch Plains, New Jersey, and played his high school ball at Paramus Catholic. So, uh, uh, you know, the Giants are going to have to deal with that kind of rush. And you see Preston Smith right there as well. They do it well in concert together. They do. They play as a team. That defensive front is well connected. Strategy with Carl Banks is brought to you by PSENG, providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. We're going to take a timeout when we come back in the program. Above the numbers with Paul Dottino and Amani Toomer here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. The Giants will play in London for the third time in their history. So far, Big Blue 2-0. They take on the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are the home team for this game. Now it's time for Above the Numbers with Paul Dottino and Amani Toomer. So let's go above the numbers and below the numbers to see what's going to happen with the Giants and the Green Bay Packers in London. Now, Amani, my pick to go above the numbers, run-stuffing, gap-filling linebacker Jalen Smith makes his Giants debut this past week, plays in 50% of the snaps, 35, to be honest, seven tackles. That's pretty good production. And let's not forget, he played two games with the Packers last year before he was cut. Mm -hmm. and then wound up with the Giants for the final month of the regular season. I smell revenge. A little bit of extra motivation, absolutely. And plus those two running backs he's got to chase around this weekend with the dual threat. It's going to be interesting to see how he handles that. Okay, Amani, so who do you have above the numbers? I got Darius Slayton. This is a guy who's a big play. He has big playability. He demonstrated that his rookie year. Last week, he had two opportunities down the field. We all know that this wide receiving core needs a big play threat to balance off Saquon Barkley and what they're doing on the ground game. He had one reception last week. It was a conversion for a first down. I'm looking for Slayton to go back to his rookie form and give the Giants some big plays. Well, now I'll tell you what, back in 2020, Slayton was third among rookie qualifiers in catching 80% of his passes, four first downs. 40 grabs of his 50 went to move the chains. And by the way, Jair Alexander has a bad groin. That could be very interesting out there on the boundary. Eric Stokes, another former number one pick, will also be playing corner for the Packers. Now, we got to go below the numbers. All right. Guess who? Yes, Quarterback, man. Aaron Rodgers. Pretty tough guy. Pretty tough guy, but he, you know, he's the reigning MVP, not having an MVP season, three interceptions on the year, and a pick six last weekend, one of the very few in his career, and hopefully that's a trend. 
Well, if it's going to be a trend, it's going to break a Giants trend. They are the only team in the NFL this year without an interception. Wow. Now, by the way, Rodgers, including the postseason, has started seven games against the Giants. He's 5-2. and two. Now, I don't put a lot in one-loss records for quarterbacks, but over those seven games, he's had four games with four touchdown passes, totaling 21 TDs against only five interceptions against the Giants and averaging 300 yards per game against Big Blue. He's got to be below the numbers. Amani, that'll do it for this week. Let's go back to Bob. Carl, the Giants are going to have to get some production out of the wide receivers. Now, the good news is Darius Slayton got open on a couple of deep balls last week. The Giants didn't hit on the plays, although they did get a pass interference on one of them, but they have to get more production out of this group as a whole. They do, because when you have Saquon Barkley playing the way he is, it's going to require more people in the box. And that means it's going to create some one-on-one -on -one matchups out there. And those guys, in particular, uh, someone with the speed of Darius Slayton has to win. And when he wins, he's got to catch it. And the Packers have some good players in the secondary, like Zaire Alexander. So the Giants will have to deal with that. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, Coach Dable rejoins us here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Packers in London on Sunday. And, uh, Coach, as we look ahead now to the Green Bay Packers, uh, this is the Giants organization's third trip to London. They've won their first two. For you, this is a first-time experience. Um, how anxious are you to see how everything kind of unfolds? Yeah, I think our, our support staff, Laura Young, has done a fantastic job of kind of coordinating that with Jim Phelan and, and the rest of the people that are involved in, in this. I know there's... There's a lot of things that go along with it, and they've been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work. Uh, you know, I'm excited to be part of this. It's been my first time, and uh, we look forward to the opportunity. Let's talk about the Packers. Uh, they come in at 3-1, and one, and when you talk about the Packers, you talk about future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't seem to have lost anything at the age of 38 years old. Yeah, another guy that's fun to watch when you're not getting ready to play him. You know, he's, he's an unbelievable player. He's... He's been a good player for a long time. He's, he's accurate. Um, he scores a lot of points. He moves the ball. He makes good decisions. Uh, it'll be, certainly be a challenge for our defense. Coach, it, assignment football has always been important, but with a quarterback with the accuracy of Aaron Rodgers, there's not much room for error, is it? No. Uh, be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there, and you know, don't lose your mind if you, if you give up a play. Um, he makes some unbelievable throws that – you're almost unguardable at times, and you have to be ready to play the next play, be resilient, um, and do a good job of, of trying to control the line of scrimmage. Coach, you know, one of the things that people always talked about as far as the strength of Drew Brees was his ability to move pieces around with his eyes. Rodgers is also has a little of that in him, doesn't he, where he can kind of look one way, and then he's going to sidearm a fastball the other way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's not anything he can't do playing quarterback position. Throw it deep, throw it short, look off guys. Uh, make loose plays, you know, you defend the first play and then you got to defend the second play within that play because he's, you know, he's remarkable at scrambling too and finding open guys, throwing on the move, uh, just, a, you know, one of the best to ever do it. Coach, in terms of preparation for this game now, as a college coach, you've been to national championships. As a pro coach, you've been to Super Bowl. So, you know, that week of, of travel and things like that, is there something that you can take from what you did and those experiences to kind of impart into what you're doing here as yeah. the head coach? Yeah, I just, I think we just try to focus on our preparation throughout the week. Uh, maybe it's a little longer than a West Coast trip, but I know there's a time change, but you know, I think we have a lot of good staff members in different areas that have done a great job of, of getting ready for this game. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll be ready to go. Uh, but we've, you know, certainly been part of some some teams and, and games mm -hmm. that were big games or big long road trips. You know, I think the best thing that I've learned, Carl, is try to keep a consistent routine throughout the week mm -hmm. uh, as best you can. With a five-hour time difference, once you guys land, because the team's going to leave on Thursday night, is that one of the key things is to try to figure out where the rest comes in and try to get your team as close to on time as possible? Yeah, try to try to sleep on the on the plane. That's why we're leaving when we're leaving. Uh, when we get there, we'll do a, a quick stretch, uh, really right off the plane, go back, have some breakfast, and then have a normal Friday practice 
Uh, so it's, it's very similar to what they're used to here other than the traveling all night. Soccer fan at all? Yeah, I like all sports. I know it's big over there. Yeah. Uh, the, the, one of the fun things about it when we were there the last couple of times, they get really fired up for punts and kicks. They, the, the crowd goes crazy for that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's a different kind of fan base, too, because there's fans of all different teams. You know, yeah. You're going to see jerseys from a lot of different things, but obviously you're not going to be looking up in the stands at that point. Yeah, no, I, I, what, a, what a cool environment and, and really privileged to, to be able to go across seas and, and be part of this game. Coach, we appreciate the time as always. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate this, it, Carl. this game on Sunday between the Giants and Packers is brought to you by United Airlines. It is presented by United Airlines, the official airline of the New York Giants. Don't forget, make sure after the game, Giants post game live, check it out. All the reaction from the Giants and Packers in London. So for Coach Dable, Carl Banks, and our entire crew, I'm Bob Popup. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop.